How is it going, everybody? Welcome back to Richmond Plays Games. I am Richmond, and we are playing Stationeers. Let's load in. On our last episode, we looked into some of the more advanced uh, smelting techniques using an act event to vacate the waste gas out of our furnace chamber. Uh, we smelted some, some gold that way, got some electrum and some constantine, constantine, however you pronounce it. Um, on our handy dandy furnace right over there. Let's go ahead and shut off our active vent now that our pressure in there is down to zero. And today's episode, what we're going to do is we are going to focus on food. Um, in order to do any sort of food production in stationers, you need to construct an airtight base in order to set up a hydroponic station. Um, in doing that, we will probably need some more iron than what we've got right now. I think I'm down to just not a whole lot. 60 iron left in my auto lathe. Uh, my pipe bender, 87.5. Yeah, some more iron would probably be just what we need in order to get going. I'm actually going to go ahead and... Uh, we'll take those volatiles and we'll get rid of them. We've got a few in our mining belt right now. And uh, I don't think that we're going to need that. Um, we will need the oxide that we have in our backpack right now, that stack of 32. Uh, that will be useful for smelting in our base to give us some atmosphere. So, mining up some iron. Found a little deposit here. We'll make some room in the mining belt there. And mine out this whole, whole seam of iron. We'll do the little trick where we Use our hands to hold a couple more stacks of iron. And we'll head on back to the base. Now, when it comes to hunger, um, there is a hunger meter up there in the top right corner of the screen right below the character portrait. You'll notice mine is still at 100%. That is because when I started this out, I had the hunger meter set to zero. So if you come in here in the settings under gameplay, the hunger rate, you can adjust this. It starts out at one. Uh, you can make yourself go hungry or faster or slower. If you set it to zero, it will never go down and you never have to worry about making food, um, which is for my purposes early on, just kind of not having to worry about that initially. So we can take a little bit more time to get things going. I was not too concerned about having it on. But now that it is time to actually go and start working on that, we will turn on the hunger and we will begin working on getting a base set up. Now, the things that you need for a base is an airlock so that you can enter and exit your base while still maintaining the airtight integrity of it. Then you need to uh, actually have a airtight area to keep an atmosphere in, and then you need an atmosphere itself. So we're going to go ahead and set up a frame for our base. I think I used all of the frames I did. I've got a bunch of steel though, so I'm actually going to go ahead and go with steel frames for the base, I think, because I've got 400 steel sitting in there. So, we'll go ahead and get some steel frames. We could go with iron. Iron doesn't look quite as nice though. Also, it uh, has a lower bursting pressure, um, although really the pressure that you would pressurize your base to, um, the frame would definitely be the last thing to go. Um, your windows would be the first thing to go that you will let sunlight in through. I think the uh, iron wall kit, uh, the windows there have a bursting pressure of like 150 kPa. And then the composite windows, um, which use steel and plastic, have a bursting pressure of like 
200 kPa, I want to say, but you are generally only pressurizing your base up to um, 100 kPa. So that is not going to be an issue. In fact, you don't even have to pressurize your base all the way up to 100 kPa. You can go with a lower pressure if you want to. Um, 100 kPa is what I like to do. That's kind of the default airlock pressure. Um, so it just makes sense to have that be your base pressure. It's kind of the, uh, the as the developers intended pressure, so to speak. So we're going to have to find a good place to set up our base. And I think we'll just go ahead and go somewhere out where we can easily get to it. I could get out the mining tool and flatten this whole area, but I really don't want to just spend all the time to do that. So we'll go ahead and just make the base right here. So we'll go with a three by three area. I might have to even flatten it a little bit. We'll see. Um, we're going to have a three by three area for the base. And I'm going to need some more steel frames, but we'll definitely need that corner. More steel frames. Go ahead and start building more. We'll take the iron and load it on up in there and start building even more, or start smelting even more iron. You can never have enough iron in stationaries. It is a fact. I think we've got about everything we need for our airlock in our construction. Or let's see here. It is in the construction supplies. Two kit, there's just about everything you need to get your airlock going. So we don't have to worry about uh, scouring anything else. We might make another power controller. I think, though, actually, we have two. So that is not even a concern. Um, let's get, you know what, six steel frames, I think, is enough. And oh, let's go back over here. And before we walk away from that, let's start some. We'll start some. So we start out with some iron wall kits in the lander. I've moved them over here and I put them up there. But I'm actually going to build the wall kit. Uh, this one uses uh, plastic sheets in order to finish them instead of iron sheets to finish them but it'll be worth it because they look nicer. They also have, as I mentioned earlier, a higher pressure before they burst, which we really are not going to need to take advantage of, but it's kind of nice to have. Now, you don't actually need to use walls in order to build windows for a hydroponic station. There is a uh, more advanced hydroponics that comes with a UV grow light at the cost of power usage, but that is a unnecessary power expense, so we will not bother with it. And I'm not going to play, I could place another frame there. I'm not going to do that for the time being. Um, so when you build an airlock, the three things that you have to have, four things I should say, is you need to have a frame on the bottom, you need to have a frame on each side, and a frame on the top. This way, it'll actually let you place your doors. The rest of it could be windows if you'd like. Um, our sunrise is coming up this direction, or is it the other direction? We're actually building away from the sunrise. That's fine. It's still going to get sunlight throughout the day. Um, if we put our hydroponics over here, if we put our, if we do frames here, and here, then we want to do walls. We want to do the composite window. We want to do them. We actually don't even need them on the side like that. I might go ahead and demolish those. Well, yeah, we'll demolish that one. Let's get the tool belt back out. Put the frames back in there. What do we need to deconstruct that? How about a, an angle grinder? So since we are on the, the moon and we only get sunlight from one direction, we actually don't need to put any sort of, we do not need to put any sort of 
Oh wow, I'm drawing a blank here. Um, we don't need to put it on the sides because the sunlight will only come from just straight on. Well, actually, it'll rise that way, it'll come up, and it'll start setting that way. If we were on Mars or one of the other planets with a solar inclination, then we would need to, but we're not, so we don't. So I'm going to need um, a few more walls to finish off the walls, and then I'm going to need a few, one more frame, one more frame. But first, we'll get some more power in our suit by swapping out batteries. And I just hold down Alt and drag and drop it into the slot there. It's faster than having to uh, do any sort of pick it up and then, you know, pick it up, move it to your inventory, then move it into the suit using the F key. It is just easier to hold Alt, do drag and drop. Makes life simple. And I like simple. So I think I needed five wall kits. Yeah, I need five wall kits. Then, after I get five wall kits, I will get one single steel frame. And that should get me everything I need for my base. After that, it'll just be getting everything into there, and then it will be putting together the airlock and welding everything up. So, we need another frame here. We've got windows on top, but then we need to seal up these here sides, and we will just do a composite wall there and there. Ah, I guess that was one too many, right? Because those have, yep, one, two, three windows there, three windows there. I was a bit, uh, a bit over what I needed, but that's okay. We could build a, a railing if we wanted to stop ourselves from falling somewhere. But we'll just drop that over there. Okay, we are going to need to come over here and weld those bottoms with some steel sheets so that we don't fall in and we can start working on building. Um, then we'll also need to run over to the airlock supplies in our construction crate and start grabbing everything. Do, 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 do. Steel sheets. We need definitely need nine of them for the nine that were on the bottom. Then we had, what's that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So 17 steel sheets is what we'll need. Let's go ahead and check on our smelting progress. Put that iron in there. Need seven more of those. We'll get some gold smelting. I don't think we really need any gold at the moment. I really need more copper. Uh, I might end up having to go find more. Let's see here. 169 grams of copper in the electronics printer. So I'm actually pretty good on copper at the moment. Let's get a couple more steel sheets, then we'll get out our welding torch and get to work. You don't always want to... Oh, 17 I'm pretty sure is what I needed. You don't always necessarily want to weld everything right away. Um, you'll need to weld this one and this one, and we'll weld our everything on the bottom. Oh, I need to double it up because you need to weld these solid. That one we don't actually need to weld solid, but I am doing it anyway. But uh, these ones need to get double welded to get them solid and airtight. So we'll go ahead and do that on all of the bottom ones, which we'll need to go back and get more steel sheets in order to accomplish. Um, we'll leave those open for the time being, and we'll leave those completely open as we get some more steel sheets printing on the auto lathe. Should still be on steel sheets. Yep, we'll just let that ride for a bit as we start moving some stuff over there. So some of the stuff we're going to need, not the advanced airlock circuit card, we're actually going to just use the regular, but we'll bring in the portable hydroponics. Um, we will not worry about either of those. So we'll get the portable hydroponics in here first. that there. 
Now you'll notice on the portable hydroponics there is a spot for a canister that is a spot for water um, because turns out plants need water. Your plants need a couple things in order to grow. They need a atmosphere. Um, they want at least 1% CO2 in that atmosphere. You don't need to go crazy with the CO2 um, and you don't necessarily need to mimic Earth's atmosphere exactly um, with a mostly nitrogen atmosphere. Um, eventually I like to get a 80% nitrogen, about 78% nitrogen, 20% oxygen, and 2% CO2 atmosphere, um, but it is kind of a pain to get all of the nitrogen. Nitrogen is uh, not abundant in stationaries. It is a little bit of work to get there. So we've got our portable hydroponics in there. It's got its water canister. We could bring our portable air conditioner in there to get temperature up once we get everything sealed. However, um, there are more efficient ways of getting our temperature up. So for our airlock, we need a console to control the pressurization and depressurization. We need doors in order to be the in and out, a circuit board to put in the computer or the console. We need an active vent to pump air in and out. We need a gas sensor to tell when or what the pressure is so it knows when to stop. And we need pipe to connect to the active vent as we did with the as we did with the active vent over here at the furnace, we will need pipe to connect to it. So the first thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and place a console. Um, we will place it just right here in the middle. Then we will take our airlock circuit card and then I'll need to go get a glass sheet in order to finish off this. Then we will put a active vent and we'll flip it so that the power is down and the we'll flip it so that the power is down and the vent for the gas or the spot for the gas is up then we'll get out our sensor we'll go to gas sensor and build it then we will need our doors well we'll go ahead and do the uh We'll go ahead and do our pipes for our active vent first. So I'm just going to go ahead and do this. There's actually a trick here. Um, you can actually just straight up use, you can just straight up use these pipes as your tank. Uh, it does not take very much atmosphere. Um, very many moles of your atmosphere in order to pressurize an airlock and it only needs to store that much so the pipes can actually act as your storage here uh, you don't need to get a, hooked up to a canister or anything like that you can just use the pipes and call it good there so we'll put those pipes back in there um, we will need a data disk in order to configure our uh, console then I think we should still have some glass sheets around here unless something crazy happened with them. I may have lost them or maybe I didn't lose them somewhere. Maybe I just placed them in a spot that was not their original starting home and promptly forgot about it. There they are, glass sheets. I only need one. Actually, I'll go ahead and grab the whole stack so that I can finish off all my windows. Um, I will also grab plastic sheets so that I can completely finish off everything I need to. So we'll use a glass sheet in order to finish off the console. We'll drop those right in there. Then we're going to need power to this, but first let's get the doors in there. Um, we're actually going to use the glass door. The glass door has the largest actual door itself. It's easiest to get stuff in and out of it. Welding torch and plastic sheets next in order to continue the construction. So we'll get those on there. Then a crowbar and glass sheets in order to continue the construction. Crowbar and glass sheets. 
and it is done, then we can use our crowbar open it to force it open, construct, and force open. Okay, there is that. Um, we're going to need to wire everything together, and for that I'm going to need to print out more cable. Um, I'm also going to want to set up its own power supply over here. So in order to accomplish that, first thing, before I go start doing that, I need to start printing out some more cable. Let's get some more cable coil. And we'll just let that go. Let it start flying every which way. There should be another power controller, I believe. Under the impression that we start with two. Let's see here. Portables. Solar panel. Hmm, I thought we started with two power controllers. Oh, that's right. I used my other power controller to provide a dedicated power source for our automated solar tracking. So I've used the two that I start out with. This is one reason why I tend to do the smelting before setting up a um, pressurized base because in order to make a new power controller at the kit power controller, it requires solder, which we made on one of our last episodes. So now that we can do another power controller, and let's go ahead and make another large battery. I don't want to pull one of the ones out of there. Or rather, I will pull a charged one out of there, but I want to be able to have a battery to replace it. So, and we need steel for that. So generally speaking, um, getting smelting figured out before you move on to a base is a good idea. Also because steel frames are actually a little bit more material efficient. It's only two grams of steel in order to make a frame, whereas a um, iron frame is uh, four grams of iron. So we'll do that. Then we will get this other iron frame right out here. We'll actually go ahead and put the power control on. We'll put the power control right there on that wall. Get our crowbar out to open it. Put a battery in. Flip the switch on. We can go ahead and close that up. So we need to get power over to my power controller. That is my outgoing, this is my ingoing. So we'll get that. This will be a little bit of work. And it might end up being the case where some of this cable goes underground. That's okay. As long as you kind of follow the yellow on one side and green on the other, you know that you are having it go in the right direction and you are connected. So our goal here is to get to our stationary battery kit. We want to be able to pull off of that. We do not necessarily want to daisy chain off of our other area power controller. Uh, that would be putting an extra load on it and make it more likely that um, we would be going over the uh, five kilowatt limit for a small cable and then we would have to start running heavy cable everywhere and that starts getting real expensive on gold although it's not the worst of ideas because um, eventually sometimes what happens is, is you just run into situations where you end up just having too much stuff on your circuits and uh, you start having wire burn up and sometimes that wire is inside of welded frames and you can't see it and suddenly you have to start taking apart sections of your pressurized base in order to hunt down the burnt cable. So it is not the worst idea to only use heavy cable and especially if you use the mod for uh, 50 gram stacks of every ore vein 
Um, it really does not put too much of a hassle on you in order to do heavy cable. One of the reasons I'm doing just regular cable for this is that the build time is faster, so it can kind of help me get through things a little quicker. So, no, enough cable to get us there, I think. Probably going to have to go back and get more. You never have enough cable in this game. Never have enough cable. Let's see here. We want to come over and hit up this side of this area power controller because that is the power generation side. So we are coming off of that as opposed to daisy chaining multiple area power controllers together, which would put additional load on this one, which would make the wire in this network more likely to burn up. Also, an area power controller serves to isolate uh, components when you're dealing with logic circuits and console controls, uh, which is another reason why it is nice to have separate networks for the different things that you do. So that when you go to, say, set up your console here, you don't have a billion different things that it is all uh, listing. And I'll show you what I mean by that here in just a second. So let's get our power going. Come down here. Now, if I remember correctly, yes. So um, when you go to run wire into a airlock area, um, the doors, you can only put wire in along the top, this corner. Um, if you start trying to put wire in along the sides or the bottom, it will stop you. It'll go red. Um, that is one reason why it is a good idea to not weld these things all the way in initially so that you can come in here and go like this from behind. We'll go ahead and do these other parts first. Yeah, we're definitely going to need more wire. Um, let's see. We're going to do a four-way junction here and here. We're going to do a straight piece in between them. Straight pieces to connect the power and data ports of these doors. We do absolutely need both. We'll come up here. And that's where we run out of cable for right now. We will have to go get more cable. Like I said, you never have enough cable in stationaires. Just a fact of life. However much cable you have, you can bet you're going to need more. So as we print more of that, uh, we are really close to having a airlock completed. We just need to get everything wired together, and then we will use this data disk to configure everything. Um, however, I will show you kind of a trick that I like to do in order to just make life a little bit easier. And that is I will grab the labeler from right there. Because when you go to set up your airlock, look at that, physics. Sometimes what happens with collisions in this game is that when something is spawned or something uh, is dropped, um, then it will, um, the physics engine will have it spawn slightly inside of something else, and then the collision will uh, go crazy because it sees it as, I don't know, I'm not a... Uh, game physics master but it something to do with the collision physics it doesn't like it very much so we're going to need a junction like that I don't necessarily know the why of things that they happen and these have lit up green letting you know that we've got power um, so let me get our data disk in here and I'll show you what I mean why we want to label these doors so we insert the data disk and turn on our console, and this inserts mode control, because if you don't use the data disk, look, error in config. That's because nothing is actually hooked up to it. So um, when you do mode control, you'll see two glass doors. The first one you select will be the exterior. Now on these doors, there is kind of a handy way of telling which one is which, uh, because whichever one you select, the first one, it'll go red. 
Um, but the other way to do it is just to label it. So you just say glass door interior. And on this one, I do glass door exterior. Voila. Easy. So now I know glass door exterior. Select that one first. That one's the exterior. Glass door interior. Then we need to hook up the activant and the gas sensor. And that is all you need for a functional airlock. Um, you can include a um, klaxon or a uh, strobe light, yellow rotating light. That'll kind of flash when you are pressurizing it one way or the other. Um, it looks really cool to have that ambiance going on while you're pressurizing it. We're going to cancel the pressurization so that we can actually get in here. And there we go. Our airlock is done. So the way that this goes is that you step into it, you cycle it to the exterior, it'll close, it'll activate the active vent to pump out all the atmosphere. When the gas sensor sensors a zero KPA um, inside the airlock, it'll open the exterior door. So now it is open. When you cycle to the interior, it'll close that door. It'll set the active vent to outwards and blow. Then when it senses a, using the gas sensor, a pressure of uh, 100 kPa, it will then open the inside door. However, we don't have any air, so that will never happen. So we will just hit cancel pressurize, which will let us override that default behavior and go ahead and waltz on into our palace. Um, let's go ahead and get this labeler and the data disk out of here. We really don't need those. I am going to make a quick pit stop over at my hydraulic pipe bender and I am going to get a wall heater. A wall heater is a pretty efficient way of getting heat into your uh, base. You can actually also use road flares and light up a bunch of road flares because they put off heat. The wall uh, heater uses a lot of power. Um, so if you have a pretty sensitive power setup, it is not necessarily the most uh, recommended method. So we've got our wall heater and then we just need to go ahead and start closing up our base. So let me walk through our empty walls here. We'll go ahead and put a wall heater. We'll do it there. So we'll go ahead and weld this shut now. But before we actually weld it shut, we're going to run the wire over here towards it because we don't want to run into a situation where we can't get to the power because we are uh, because we have a closed because we have a closed wall. So get out our steel sheets in one hand, our handy dandy welder in the other, and we'll go ahead and fully weld that up airtight. We'll mount the wall heater just like that. Get the other cable into it, and we can turn that on to put off some heat. We have no atmosphere to warm up at the moment, but we can change that. Uh, let's go get some more steel sheets, I think, because we need, let's see here, two, four, six, uh, eight, ten. These ones we do not actually need to. Yes, we do actually need to. So we'll need two more steel sheets. These ones we don't need to weld. So, or just one. One more, right? Because we need to get this completely closed. Then we need to get uh, two, four, six. Four, six, eight, ten. Now we're good. We're good. We will need to get power here in a second. So let's get these all welded up. These ones we can just leave open. The corners do seal. So we're good. Let's go ahead and get our airlock cycled to the outside. And actually, before we... Whoa! How about that? That was some collision madness there. Um, I think we had an issue where our... So I think we had an issue where 
when we picked that up we were too close to it or something um, and this is why we have five minute autosave on so let's go to our autosave hopefully it autosaved us maybe Ho oh, ho, I did not autosave us. We just lost all our progress there, I believe. Maybe. We'll see if it autosaved us or not. See what happens here. Uh, okay, so it did autosave us. We are right back to where we were before. Cancel, depressurize. We had just gotten to the point where we set up our airlock there. So that's good. So we didn't lose too much. So let's put the data disk and the labeler back in there. I think. Hmm. Do we need, let's try and pick up that not quite sure what happened there. We're going to put that there and not mess with it anymore. Um, so we need to come back in here and let's get that power set up for our wall heater. Right there. Okay, then we will need to bring inside our base the, what did we need to bring in there? I was thinking we would need to bring something. Um, I was, oh, it was the oxygen tank that I was thinking about bringing. We'll go ahead and bring that in there so we don't have to just throw a whole bunch of oxide on the ground in order to get an atmosphere going. Um, I don't generally like to use this one. I like to melt oxide instead for getting my initial base atmosphere going. However, in the interest of time, it is certainly quicker to use the portable oxygen tank. So we've got our portable oxygen tank in there. Um, we need to go back and we need to grab our steel sheets. We need to make that wall heater again. Grab our steel sheets. Make a wall heater on the hydraulic pipe bender. Make a wall heater. Then we can go back over there and I think get right back to where we left off. Minus... Uh, adding on a few things to the base in the form of some of those sheets. So let's get welding. Wall heater. Then we'll get the rest of the base. On top of the airlock, get that all sealed in. And there, one steel sheet to spare. Then we will need to come over here with our plastic sheets in order to finish up all of these walls. Hunger. Starting to get a little hungry. Um, initially, there are these cereal bars in your inventory that can tide you over until you get everything going. So we'll get our composite window frames and then we will use glass sheets in order to finish them off. Glass, 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 and glass, glass. And glass. I think I started mentioning it earlier, but uh, in order for uh, anything to grow in your base, you need um, an atmosphere, you need the proper temperature, 
you need sunlight and you need water. So we have got a enclosed base here. We are going to go ahead and open up our oxygen tank and we're going to start seeing an atmosphere appear here. Uh oh, look at that, it did it again, silly collision. Collision physics in an early access game sometimes get a bit funky. So we are going to, I think, have to lose what progress we have made on our atmosphere so far. Going to have to let all that go in order to go hunt down our oxygen tank, which might just be gone. Uh, we're losing oxygen like crazy over there. Wouldn't surprise me if it's all gone. It is not all gone. Let's get this back over to our base. Stationers is an early access game. They have revamped the game engine multiple times, and each time it has helped out with the physics. Um, but, you know, like all early access games, you're bound to have a bug or two. So, we'll do that. Then let's get that glass sheet back on there to get our base back sealed. Then let's open up that oxygen tank again to get our atmosphere going. So our target is um, 100 kPa. If we can get up to 100 kPa, then that will make our airlock work without a hinge. A hitch, I should say. Uh, maybe we can increase that even further. Get a whole bunch of airflow in here. And I kind of messed up and I did not get my atmospheric. Let's go ahead and Oh shoot, that's never going to go, is it? Okay, there we go, that's fine. I just took the glass sheets off of that so that we can actually get over here. Cancel pressurize, cycle it to the exterior, and notice how it'll suck out everything in there. It all went into that pipe. I need to come over here and get another battery for my suit. Do not particularly run to run out of battery, and then I am going to grab the um, atmospheric analyzer cartridge for the data pad or the tablet. Running low on a filter. Man, just everything uh, going wrong all at the same time. Let's see here. That's our atmospheric analyzer cartridge. Let's open up our... Um, I should make a note on filters. Uh, you can produce more filters. Notice here the one in the leftmost slot is the one that gets used first. You can come over here to a hydraulic pipe bender and for only five iron. You can produce new filters. And unless you have a recycler, there is really nothing to do with the empty ones. So I just toss them in a hole somewhere. So atmospheric analyzer. We'll put the tracker cartridge back in the backpack for now. And let's get back into our base. Cycle that airlock. It's going to only pressurize up to, uh oh, I think I made a big mistake. Let's see here. I left that open and everything went. So we could have too much air in here. Do we have too much air in here? No, we don't have too much air in here. We would if I had not um, lost a whole bunch of air by sending my oxygen tank flying. 
And I don't know what that banging noise is, and I don't like it. But. Oh, goodness. Okay. Let's, uh, let's just focus on what matters. The hydroponics. So, our atmosphere is currently 100% O2. That's not going to do. Plants need some CO2. Where can we get CO2? Um, well, first off, let's go ahead and unlock our mask and open it. And uh, enjoy that that fresh, uh, breathable air. There's something moving around. Don't know what it is. That's really annoying, though. So, we can take our suit. We can take our waste tank. Waste tank critical. And we can just sit here and open it. And we can empty out our waste tank. Because our waste tank is... Uh, filled with the CO2 that we breathe out. So hey look, we just got ourselves a 1% CO2 atmosphere by virtue of opening up our waste tank and giving every last bit of our waste CO2 to the atmosphere here. So let's head on out and go grab some seeds so that we can grow them in our portable hydroponics. We've got sunlight, we've got a water jug, a little canister of water there. We've got a atmosphere, and I will need to get the temperature up. Forgot about that one. But we'll come over here to the organic supplies. Um, you notice how we've got plenty of cereal bars to get us through the uh, initial um, lack of food. And we'll do some tomatoes, sure. All right. Let's get back on in here, cycle to the interior. And it will not get us all the way up to the 100 kPa that our goal is. So we'll cancel the pressurize. What's eventually going to happen is that uh, we'll eventually get a high enough pressure in here by virtue of uh, just bringing more air in or um, eventually we'll empty enough CO2 into the atmosphere or something like that. So it is 13 degrees Celsius in here. I think it needs to be 15 minimum for tomatoes, but we'll find out. And the way we can find out is it says tomato is wilting. That means it is not quite warm enough in here for them. Um, it should grow, but slowly, but we'll find out. We'll go ahead and plant a pair of tomatoes in there. And uh, notice how we planted one each. Then we should get a return of a couple of tomatoes out of those. It is no longer wilting. It is now growing. So it'll just take just a few minutes for those to grow. In the meantime, I'm going to turn off my heater because I don't... Well, I'll let it get up to 20 degrees Celsius. Um, that will also increase our pressure slightly just by virtue of the uh, pressure increasing and the temperature following. We'll get the cereal bar out of our uniform and have a nice little munch on that. We got 60% hunger fill from one cereal bar, and I think we have like, oh, seven or so more of them in our kit. Notice the particle effects of uh, air moving. That's because the pressure is increasing over in this corner where the temperature goes up, and it is then moving out everywhere in the sealed environment. We're up to 18 degrees Celsius. It's probably going to be a little bit. Let's go find something else to do while we're waiting. We can go get some more oxygen, maybe. Let's see if we can get our oxygen tank without it going collision crazy. There we go. And notice how uh, it's kind of a tight fit. It's even worse of a tight fit if you use the non-windowed door. There we go. We'll have to figure out a way to get some more oxygen. That can be a good project for our next episode um, is working on capturing gases. That can also lead us into the uh, gas-fueled furnace. Let's see, see if those have started growing yet. If they haven't, I'll go ahead and sign off anyway. But at least we can see what's going on. I'm still curious as to what that clicking is. 
I'm willing to bet that it is something that will go away as soon as I reload the game. Let me make sure this is turned off. That's turned off. Sometimes a tool that's on can make noise. Cannot tell you. We are a balmy 22 degrees, 23 degrees Celsius in here. And so those will grow. I'm going to go ahead and sign off for now. Let's just check something real quick. And that is the pressure inside our water tank. Ah, look, our tomatoes just grew a little bit more. Um, it is still has two moles, 293 kPa. Um, we can capture water at the same in the same way that we'll capture. Oh, that's why they weren't growing before. They were not in direct sunlight before. It was nighttime when we initially planted these. But we can capture water in the form of um, uh, frozen uh, water ice out there as we go mining. And uh, we'll go ahead and end that now. Uh, next episode, we will look at um, capturing gases using the furnace. I'll modify my setup on the furnace a little bit. And we can capture some oxygen and some hydrogen and some water as well as possibly the uh, waste gases that result from combustion. That is going to be it for Richmond Plays Games for today. We have been playing Stationeers, and I will see you all next time.